Texas Congressman Jody Arrington witnessed firsthand what's happening along the border. He led a three-day delegation there this week. He joins us now. Congressman, let's first get to this video. I want to hear your reaction. It looks more and more like children are bearing the brunt of this border crisis. Well, they are. And this president is complicit. This administration's policies are aiding and abetting narco terrorists. These are sophisticated paramilitary organizations trafficking people, abusing and exploiting the most vulnerable people, using children as passports to come to this country. And for one reason, because this administration is not enforcing the laws, they're not securing the border, and they don't intend to. They don't have a plan, and they've created this unprecedented, unmitigated crisis that I got to see firsthand. And if, and if the president made a trip to the border and saw it firsthand, he'd have to own it. And he's afraid to own it because the left is in charge. He's afraid of the left, and he won't be able to do anything about it. And he's put the border czar in Kamala Harris, who's an open borders advocate. It's, an, sure. it's insult to injury. So to that point, Congressman, actually, first, let me tell our viewers at home that what you're looking at on the other side of your screen from us is footage from the congressman's own travels there this week. The photos and videos are unique to us. Thanks so much for sharing them with us. So you say that these migrants, these families and kids are streaming across the U.S. southern border because the Biden administration has sort of enticed them to do so with uh, sympathetic policies. But the Biden administration says that's not true. They say these folks are coming here out of desperation. They are coming here because they are fleeing conditions that are so horrible at home in the Northern Triangle countries that most Americans could barely sort of even conceive of how they live. The threat of the cartels and human traffickers and coyotes and all these horrible things. Isn't there some element of truth to that too, sir? Well, there's an element of truth that there are uh, pockets in this country where we have crime-ridden neighborhoods. Th there's an element of truth that we have a drug epidemic in this country. Uh, so our, our oath is to the Constitution and our obligation is to the American people first. So there are plenty of ways to work on immigration with our colleagues, but not if we don't prioritize the American people. So, th so, so the first thing is to provide for the common defense of the American people, to provide for the general welfare of our citizens, and to faithfully execute the laws of the land. That's the Constitution, Jillian. So yeah. that's the first thing we've got to do. And then what we've done to allow the illegal passage of people into our country has created this, uh, this uh, uh, horrible disaster with the drug cartels and the people that you saw on the screen where kids are being recycled as, as a passport and a way to get to this country because that's the clear message that's been sent by this administration. So if policy is the underlying problem for this crisis, for these ills, sir, you've now been there, you've seen more than most Americans firsthand. What's your big takeaway in terms of a policy fix or a policy solution to where we are now? How could we conceivably mitigate this crisis moving forward or is it too late? Well, I talked to some of the unaccompanied minors. They happen to be 17-year-old boys, um, and they were clear that the last administration would not tolerate illegal immigration. This administration welcomed it. That, those were their words, not mine. So just starting with enforcing the laws and allowing the Border Patrol not to be caseworkers, but to secure the border, that's the first step. There are holes in our immigration system that need to be closed. There are magnets like hiring illegal immigrants that that need to be turned off. Mm -hmm. And there are long-term issues, but just giving international aid and having an open border situation where you decriminalize crossings is not the answer. It is actually exacerbating the situation and empowering the drug cartels who are in operational control of the border, not the United States, but the drug cartels. So uh, we have not seen the political will probably in decades. We saw it under President Trump. And yeah. now we have the opposite, which is um, just a uh, sort of a come one, come all, free for all. And it's, uh, and it's hurting the American people and they feel abandoned by their government. 
patch the holes, eliminate the magnets, the enticements for some of these folks to come here in the first place. It's a first step policy solution, solution option. Thanks for sharing it with us today, sir.